Hello and welcome to this SharePoint Online Administration Playbook course. My name is Vlad Catrinescu and I'll be your instructor for this course. In this module, we will learn how to lock and unlock SharePoint sites. We will first look at why is this useful and when locking and unlocking SharePoint sites make sense for the SharePoint admin. And finally, we will learn how to actually get it done. So let's start. Why would we want to do this? What's the business case? Locking a SharePoint site allows you to make the site read only or completely blocking access to a site. A good example could be a project site that you want to keep as an archive, but make sure it's in read only mode so nobody can modify, upload, or delete documents. As for blocking people from a site, you could have, for example, an old board or committee site that shouldn't be accessed anymore, but you want to keep it there hidden for compliance or other reasons and being able to remake it accessible very quickly. Now that we know the why, let's learn how to lock and unlock SharePoint sites. Locking and unlocking SharePoint sites is done again with the SharePoint Online PowerShell module. And as always, make sure you have the latest version available. There are three lock options for SharePoint sites. First one is of course unlocked, which is the normal state with normal collaboration. The second option is read only, where as the name says, the content can be read, but you're preventing users from adding, updating, or deleting content. The last option is no access. In no access, users would not be able to access the site at all, and they would get a 403 error. You could optionally set up a redirect URL for all of the sites locked in no access mode. So you could create a support page, for example, telling them that the site cannot be accessed and a way to contact IT if they need it unlocked. There are some limitations you need to know. First of all, you cannot set the lock state on the root site of your tenant or a Microsoft 365 group connected site. For sites that are Microsoft 365 group connected and also have a Microsoft Teams team, you could look at the archive functionality provided from Microsoft Teams, but that's outside of the scope of this course. To lock a site, more specifically in read only, we will use the set SPO site partial commandlet, provide the identity of the site, which is the URL, and the parameter we will use is lock state, and to make it read only, we will pass read only in there. To make the site inaccessible, it's very similar, but we will use no access inside the lock state parameter. To configure the tenant wide redirect for no access sites, we actually need to specify the site or page at the tenant level. So we will use the set SPO tenant PowerShell commandlet and specify the no access redirect URL parameter and point it to where we want people to be redirected. Now that we have seen the theory, let's go to the lab environment and see how we can lock and unlock SharePoint sites. We are now in the demo environment and let me open up the PowerShell ISC where I have already logged in to SharePoint Online by using the SharePoint Online Management Shell. In this demo, we are going to play with a few sites that we have created and modified in previous demos, Team Bravo and Alpha Team. Let's start first of all by changing a site to read only. So in order to lock a site to read only, we will use the set SPO site PowerShell commandlet, specify the identity of the site 
we want to do the exchange on, in this case, alpha team. And then we will use the lock state parameter, which we will set to read only. So let me run this. It should only take a few seconds. And there we go. It's already done. Now, if I go to the browser and I refresh the alpha team site, I should have a warning that says this SharePoint site is read only right now. So if I go to documents, for example, you see, I do not have the plus button. I cannot add any documents. I cannot modify the page or anything. This site is now on read only. So this is the read only mode. Now, if we go back to the PowerShell, let me scroll down a bit. Let's take a look at the no access mode. So in this case, I will run again the set SPO site, provide the identity, which is team Bravo, and then the lock state, which is no access. If I leave it like that right now, what will happen is that users will get a not found or a 403 forbidden error. But in order to make this more user friendly, I have actually created a page on the intranet that says the site you attempted to visit has been locked. And then a bit of information on what users should do if they need to get access to the site. And I can use the set SPO tenant and provide that URL in the no access redirect URL. So if any user goes on a site that is in the no access lock state, they will be automatically redirected to that specific page part of the intranet. So let's run that. It's already done. However, it might take a few seconds until we see the experience in the actual browser. So let's try to do a refresh here. Great. It actually worked right away. You can see that I was not able to refresh the Dream Bravo site, but it has actually redirected me to the page that we specified in the tenant properties. So now any user that goes there, either by a bookmark, a link from an old email, they will get some information that the site is still there, but it's locked and a way for them to contact somebody in order to get it unlocked. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how do we unlock sites? Procedure is very similar. Set SPO site, give it the identity, and the lock state should be on lock. So if I run this now on the alpha team site, if I go back here, click on refresh, my warning should be gone. And now I am able to actually create things. And again, it might take a few minutes before the user interface experience is completely refreshed or a few refreshes if you do it right away. But as you can see now, I have my new button and I'm ready to collaborate in this site again. This is it for this demo in which we have seen how to set a site to read only, to no access, how to redirect all of the requests to a locked site in no access mode to a nice page in the intranet that tells people what to do, and finally, how to unlock sites. This is it for this demo, and now let's go back in the slides and finish off this module. Before we finish off this module, let's review what we have learned. In this module, we have first looked at when locking and unlocking SharePoint sites can be useful, such as archiving project sites in read-only mode or blocking access to certain sites while keeping them intact. We have then looked at how to actually do it by using the SharePoint Online PowerShell module and the set SPO site PowerShell commandlet. We have also learned how to use the set SPO tenant PowerShell commandlet in order to set a redirect location for sites in no access mode. 